every once in a while you need to take a step back and uh, look at some things that uh, that you're doing and make sure that they really square with uh, your understanding of uh, of how things work. Uh, case in point is S parameters. In the uh, SI world, we like to use S parameters because they're a convenient way to represent a uh, high frequency performance of passive interconnects. Uh, when, once you get above one gigahertz, S parameters are very convenient to do this sort of thing. But we need to be sensitive or have a deeper understanding at least of what's going on when we do use S parameters. And to demonstrate this, I'm taking a representation of a uh, transmission line using an RLGC definition. Uh, the line is rather long, about four inches, um, and we've characterized it at one gigahertz. And what we're going to do is we're going to step through this line um, and increase the loss. We're going to increase the resistive loss along this line and see how this is reflected in the S parameters. Uh, one thing that people really don't have a good grasp of generally when they're using S parameters is for an order of magnitude increase in my loss, what, to, what happens with my S parameters. And I think you'll be surprised as we go through this example. Um, one of the things that we're also going to do is we'll look at eye diagrams for our very low loss line case and our very high loss line case uh, just in contrast. And so you can see here I've already set up that simulation using the port PRBS or pseudo random bit stream where I'm going to operate this at uh, 40 gigabits which is 20 gigahertz run 512 symbols with eight uh, samples through that. One of the nice things about the AWR design environment is that we can have active sources like this um, and still do S parameters linear S parameters at the same time without having to switch sources or create any kind of false hierarchy. So here's my very low loss line. You can see I have almost no loss associated with it. Um, for our low loss line, I have about um, uh, 0.1 ohms, so uh, I'll say reasonably uh, loss or low loss line. For my high loss line, um, I have one ohm, which is a, a little bit on the high side, but still, let's say, reasonable depending upon the length and of interconnect and how much of it we have, the thickness of the um, the copper that we might be using. And for a very high loss example, I have 50 ohms, which is just ludicrous. Um, and you can see on this example, I'm also doing the PRBS um, simulation as well. So if we look at the results for this in terms of S parameters, I think, uh, I think you'll be kind of surprised here. Um, what you'll see is that across the board, the change in S parameters is almost um, almost imperceptible. Uh, the difference in the S parameters is very, very nominal as we go and step through our uh, low loss and high loss cases. So for very large changes in um, S parameters, you can see down here that for our for a 50 ohm case, we have a 5% change roughly. But for very large change, orders of magnitude change in loss, we really don't see the S parameter through the S21 measurement um, changing all that much. And this is kind of concerning to us because if we're going to rely on S parameters to model our interconnects or if somebody's going to give us a model for a connector or some other passive um, component in our signal integrity chain, uh, then if we're going to compare one set of S parameters to another, we need to be very careful uh, about how we treat loss or how we talk about the real resistive loss when we do this. Um, finally, if we look at the eye diagram, the difference between the uh, the low and the high loss is is quite substantial, uh, or at least very noticeable. And uh, we would be somewhat concerned if we saw this drop and then looked at the S parameters and didn't see a, a, a commensurate change in them. Um, this would be a little bit concerning. So just uh, beware. Um, S parameters are very powerful. I, I don't want to persuade you not to use S parameters because above a few gigahertz are definitely the way to go. But you need to understand the limitation of S parameters when it comes to resistive line loss. That there could be rather large changes, order of magnitude changes that are substantial and uh, have impact on your signal integrity that are not necessarily reflected to the same degree in the S21 measurement. If you'd like more information about using S parameters, whether it's single-ended or mixed mode, or doing eye diagrams in uh, AWR with uh, HSPICE or uh, with APLAC time domain simulation, or even with the uh, harmonic balances I've done here, uh, there's more information on AWR TV or on the AWR website in terms of white papers and examples. And if you'd like still more information, I encourage you to contact your AWR sales professional.